Okay, so we're modeling a tool or weapon um, that you're going to draw yourself first. The one I've drawn so far is just a, a Warhammer um, with a side view. So I'm going to bring in this and trace it. So I put that image in a folder. <clears throat> I'm going to save my Blender file to that same folder. Um, doo -doo -doo. And that way, it'll be easy to um, find the image. OK, so it's saved. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to delete pretty much everything from my scene because I don't need it. And I'm going to go in front view and go to add um, image and a background image. You can use either one, actually, but I'm going to do background. And since I already saved it in the folder with my image, it should pop up immediately. Load background image, and there it is. Um, you may need to rotate it, so you can do it over here in the details or um, up here as well. Oops. You might want to scale the thing up. To whatever size fits best for you and then try to line it up with uh with the grid best we can okay close enough so um this thing is basically a bunch of different simple shapes, right? It's a cylinder, a sphere, some cones, some cubes, and so on. Um, so to start this guy, I'm gonna do a, uh, I'll start with the bottom part. I'm gonna start with the sphere down here. Um, I don't wanna make this thing too high res, so I'm gonna open up the options down here and, and drop it down, let's see. Maybe like that, about halfway. So for me, 16 and eight. Okay, so I'm gonna move that guy down and scale it to fit roughly the size that I want. Um, and for this one, since it's roughly symmetrical, I really only have to model one side and then this is the asymmetrical part. Um, but let's let me just start blocking it out. So easiest way to start blocking out the top part would be to grab these top guys, um, go back into my front view, and press E to extrude them upwards. Might be a little bit bigger than I want, so I can scale it in first a bit. Something like that. And then press E to extrude it up. That's about the right size that I want. Okay, I'm just gonna move it up some more to here. And then the top piece, I'll extrude it up <clears throat> one more time and then scale it in. So press S to scale in to make a pointy tip. If I want the tip to be a little bit more pointy, I can grab the vertice and pull it up a little bit, make it pointier. So there's that shape. Um, let's just start blocking out all these shapes. So same kind of thing down here. Uh, I, I just use my circle select brush, by the way. So if you guys are wondering how I'm selecting fast, uh, just press C or it's uh, right here. Oh, wait. Right here. Um, and then a right click to cancel that. So pull this one out, scale it in. Grab the last tip and then pull that down. All right. Um, now for this side, I might want to do something a little bit different. Um, 
So actually, you know, I can kind of do that. Let's see, Let's see how it works. That's not bad. I mean, it's too square for my taste. Uh, so let me see if I can change that a bit. I'm going to do, let's see, an inset face thing. Does that, does that not work? It never works for me. There you go. Inset faces. And then kind of click drag so you can get geometry inside of geometry. And when you do that, everything stays as quads. It doesn't really require you to do loops or anything. It's kind of a cheater way of, of insetting your geometry a bit. <clears throat> um, and to round this guy out, you probably just want to scale these a little bit apart from each other. Something like that. I could probably use some more geometry, but um, just for now, I'll keep it simple. OK. Um, so I'm not going to bother with the other side, because I'll just chop this thing in half and then flip it. Uh, for up here, let's see. I'm going to do a cube and some cuts. So. Let me make my cuts first and just kind of pre-plan the cuts. Um, so I just do loop cut over here and then click drag to where I want to put those cuts. And for me, I'm just going to line them up where these need to go. OK. Um, then I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to add this cube in there first. so. Go back to uh, object mode and then go add cube and scale it up to how I want it. Make sure it's not too crazy fat from the top. So, um, I mean, I, pr I want it pretty fat like that. So, You can switch to wireframe if you want to see your drawing underneath. So you can hit this, uh, hit the button up here, or you can press Z and change your view. And now I'm going to kind of want to make the same cuts here to match up. So uh, loop cut again, and then click drag to where I want the cuts. Something like that. And they're going to, I'm going to have to cut it this way as well. So something like that, where they connect. Maybe that's a little too far apart. So maybe like that. It's up to you. you guys are drawing your own stuff, so you can really uh, um, customize it however you want. So now these are two separate objects. I'm going to actually have to join them together. So if I hold shift and join the other, or shift click both of them, uh, you can go to object, and there should be a join thing in here somewhere. Join right here. Control J. So now that they're one object, um, I can <clears throat> try to connect them and stuff. So. Let's see. This one will connect to. Hmm, how far is that? Looks like I'm going to need two. So I might need one more cut down the middle of this thing. Just to match up with however many sides I have over here. So these two guys and. Let's see yeah, that this big section. Um, grab those and then go to edge, bridge edge loops. And it's not exactly what we want, but we'll tweak it in a little bit. 
Um, let's do the same here. I can find the ones I want. These guys. Bridge edge loops. And oops. Edge bridge edge loops. Okay. So it's connected. Um, I'm probably going to want to shape these a little bit so I can just do a few edge loops on these two to get this whatever shape I need. Um, yeah, let's do, well, some of them don't need as many, so. This one kind of doesn't need any because it's straight. This one I could use a few because it's curved. And yeah, just put them in as needed um, for yours. And then you're gonna cut to start fine tuning things, so. Scale it down towards each other. Uh, you might need to just go in here like vertice at a time and just move them as needed. So I use a uh, B for box select and then G to grab it and move it. It does get a wee bit tedious, but oops. But that's okay. Um, what I'm not going to be a perfectionist on this, but and the reason I'm doing box <clears throat> the box select is because there's vertices behind it that I need to grab as well. So I can't just grab uh, the front one because there's actually three vertices here. So let's say that's the shape I want for some reason. Um, it's kind of strange up here, but whatever. OK, good enough. Um, I'm going to want to kind of chamfer the edges of this thing. Um, let's see if I can do that first. So I'm going to select all the edges and see if uh, one of these tools will work for me. I'm just holding Shift and Alt because I'm selecting the loops and uh, with Alt and then Shift is Add. So Shift and Alt, and now I got all those edges, I think. Um, and let's try the Bevel tool. It uh, generally doesn't work too great for me, but I'll give it a try. Jeez. Yeah. There we go. So it kind of works. Uh, so I'm trying. Yeah, that's I'd do what I wanted. So yeah, bevel tool can do that for you. Um, and then let's see. Just to, I'm almost I'm getting close to done actually uh, with at least the block out. Um, so the last part or the next part is this uh, big cone thing at the end. Um, so there's a few ways that I can do that. I can, if I want it to look really conical, I can make it a cone to start with. So add a cone. I'm not going to want very many edges, though. I'll try to start with eight. Let me see. Yeah, that should be fine. I'll just start with eight um, and see how it goes. I might need to readjust later. OK, something like that. And now we just got to connect these guys somehow. Um, you don't technically have to connect them, but uh, it would, if it's one piece of metal, it would make more sense that these are, would be connected. Um, so I'm going to kind of 
just try to use the geometry I already have here and move it a bit so it'll fit better once I connect it. Um, see if you can understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to grab these, basically those vertices in there that are hidden and kind of just try to line them up. So I'll scale them apart, move them up a little bit. So those will pretty much align with that. Um, looks like I do have some extra geometry. Oh, we'll see. Let me just try this first. Oops. Okay. So scale it apart. Yeah, it looks like I do have enough to give it like two more um, two more cuts for the geometry. So I'm gonna actually get rid of like go back into this mode. Get rid of that cone and I'm gonna add one that is um, ten ten vertices. Try that instead. I should have just went in there and counted, but I figured I'd try um, to wing it. So, yeah, okay, so there. Basically, I want to set these up so that they'll match up with that. So, let me try to do that real quick. Actually, I might even have more um, geometry than this. Yeah, it looks like I have two more. So uh, 12, 12 sided uh, um, cone. So you kind of want to match your geometry up with uh, what you already have, if possible, and kind of pre plan it, unlike I did. Um, but now this should be able to match up for me. Make it the right size. Okay. I'll just put it there for a second. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do, do, do. Maybe I, do I still have more than that? Did I, man, kind of blowing this one here. Um, do, 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 it's okay though. I will save it. Oh, I just need to get it like connected and I'll make, I'll try to clean up my geometry after the fact. Okay, something like that. Um, and then this, uh, 
this one. I just think that's the one. This one goes down here. That goes there. And I pretty much got it lined up now. So that it, um, it'll fit. I'm going to try to make this a little bit smoother, though. Actually, I'm just going to cut all this stuff out. So, what are you modeling, Mr. Allen? This is a here's the object. So, it's going to be a Warhammer type thing. Uh, you know, I started playing Minecraft Dungeons last night. Nice. Let me finish this up. So, there's that. Um, let me pop this guy closer. Just as close as I can, um, and you can act, you can bridge the edges together, or you can try to merge them if it's close enough. I'm gonna try that and see if it works. So let me join both my objects real quick. Select them both, and then hit Object uh, Join. And I'm gonna press A to select all all my vertices, um, and then go into Mesh clean up and do merge by distance. So if the vertices are really, really close to each other, they'll merge. That might be a problem because of some of these are really close. So I'll see if, see if it works or not. If not, I do, I'll do it a different way. Uh, oh, <clears throat> and down here, it'll show you what the result is. So if you uh, change the distance that you're merging from, it'll say down here, remove 12 vertices. So I know that this thing was 12 sided. I'm hoping that's the 12 that were removed, um, which is probably the case. Those look like they stayed together. So yeah, it looks like my trick did work. And then just click off of it and you're done. So if I grab one of these, you should see that they are connected now. Um, so there's that. I'd probably want to um, adjust this a bit, like just so it's not so stretched. You know, if I wanted to spend a little bit more time, I would do this. Get them all kind of flat to where they should be and kind of make it a nice little smoother transition there. Um, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That's just a uh, fine tuning. Um, Okay, so that's basically the shape. Let me cut this thing in half and um, show you how to do that. So it's all merged together. I'm gonna go edit mode. Um, I'm gonna go in wireframe and go to my face mode and then do a nice box select to grab this half of everything. So like that. And then just delete, hit the delete key, faces. Uh, you'll see there'll, there'll probably be a couple up here you might not be able to get. Or if you have like a top of a cylinder, it won't get that because it's not cut in half. So you might have to cut it in half or kind of uh, mess with it somehow. But yeah, there. So I missed those. There, that's good. Go back to object mode. Now I got half of it. All right. And I can go to uh modifier add modifier so the modifier is this little wrench thing make sure you're in object mode uh, add modifier add a um where's that mirror and then you got to tell it which axis to mirror on so x y or z um sometimes this can get a little stupid so yeah in this case it's mirroring at the wrong place uh that's because the origin for this thing is in a stupid place uh so yeah, when it rotates, it, it's like it rotates from there. That's the origin for some reason. I guess it took the origin, which is like the middle point of the cube and then applied it. We can change that though. So in this case, I'm gonna want to, uh, there's a few ways to do it, but you can see here, my this is my 3D cursor, which you can grab here and you can, um, you can set the, location of it here. So what I would do is go in and make sure that 3D cursor is set to zero, zero, zero. And if it's not, you just type it in here. And then grab your object. Um, 
go to object, uh, set origin, and then we'll set the origin to 3D cursor. So now when I rotate it, it rotates from here where I wanted it to. And also now when I um, now when I mirror it, it'll mirror from that location as well. So doop. now it's mirrored. Um, if I want to apply this, I just hit apply. And that's it. I mean, I'll probably do the handle later, um, just because it'll take a couple seconds, but that's the gist of it. Uh, you'll probably want to put at least these in real quick to get this shape going. Um, and then, yeah, I'll do the handle in a little bit, but it's the same technique. You just extrude it out, connect it, and then extrude out points. Yep, and, oops. Okay, there it is. Um, minus the handle. Or you can keep it as is if you want to make it completely symmetrical. I'm not sure how big this would be. I'm, I'm assuming like a Thor hammer, kind of one-handed hammer. Otherwise, this ball would be too gigantic. But um, yeah, so that's how I would do a simple concept drawing. Uh, break it down into the basic shapes. Um, block those out as low poly as you can. Connect them all together. Make your cuts only as needed. <laughs> and get the basic shape done. Um, in the next ones, I'll show you how to um, make it a higher res one. We'll unwrap it, we'll put textures on it and uh, get this thing fully game ready. Um, but that's it. So.